If you've never used a Linux-based operating system, Ubuntu is a great entry-level Linux distribution that's user-friendly for beginners, especially for those of you that have been using Windows or Mac OS. In this beginner's guide, I will show you the basics to help you get started using Ubuntu. Coming up next on Tech Umbo. Unlike Windows and Mac OS, Ubuntu is completely free and open source. Whether you plan to use it as your primary operating system or run it alongside another, you can download the ISO file directly from the Ubuntu website. In the top bar, go to Download and select Ubuntu Desktop. I recommend downloading the latest version offering long-term support. Near the bottom of the Downloads page, you will find the installation guides for both Windows and Mac OS. If you'd prefer to run Ubuntu in a virtual machine on your computer, I've created a video to install it into VirtualBox. The link to that video is in the description if you want to check that out. Compared to most operating systems, the interface is quite different. Let's first take a look at the top bar. Clicking on Activities in the top left gives you a search bar to help find programs, files, and folders on your computer. On the right side is Workspaces. This is where you can create multiple desktop environments on the same computer. When you have any programs opened, they will show up to the right of activities. This is where you can get quick access to the settings, among other stuff, depending on which program you have open. The date and time appear in the middle of the top bar. Clicking on it brings up a calendar and any notifications. In the top right, you'll see the system indicators. Selecting any of them brings up a single menu to adjust the system volume, network, settings, lock your screen, and you can restart or power off your computer from here as well. The dock on the left side of the screen shows your file explorer, your favorite programs, along with ones that are currently running. And in the lower left is the app drawer. This is where you'll find the programs that are installed on your computer. In the lower middle, you can switch between your most frequently used programs and all. Now that you have a general idea of how to get around Ubuntu, let's dive deeper into the various features of this operating system. Since this is a beginner's tutorial, we'll avoid the use of the terminal window and keyboard shortcuts. I'll cover those in future videos. Let's now take a closer look at the dock, which is sometimes referred to as the launcher or the sidebar. To open any program in the dock, left click on it. Just like any operating system, you can minimize, maximize, or close out any window in the upper right. Right-clicking any app icon gives app-specific functions. For example, with Firefox, you can open a new window, open a new private window, remove from favorites, or show details about that app. The icons for the apps can be moved by left-clicking and dragging to its new location. If you have programs that you use on a regular basis, you should add those to the dock. Here's how you do that. Go to the app drawer in the lower left, find and open the program you'd like to add. Blender's a good one. You'll see that its icon now appears in the dock. Right click on it and select Add to Favorites. And that's all there is to it. Earlier, I showed you workspaces where you can create multiple desktop environments. To move this window to a new workspace, Select Activities in the upper left, left-click and drag the window to a different workspace. Just use the Workspace Selector to switch between workspaces. Two workspaces are initially provided. New ones appear automatically as needed. This can be useful if you multitask working on different projects. Within the first couple hours of loading up a fresh install of an operating system, you will want to install new programs onto your computer. There are many ways to do this. The Ubuntu software application is a good place to start. It can be accessed in the dock or in the app drawer. Click on it to load it up. If you know the specific program that you're looking for, select the search icon in the upper right and a search box will appear. Just type the name of the program that you're looking for and it will appear if available or you could go through the various categories listed to find new programs. Select the drop-down arrow to show more categories. Most of the programs here are free and open source. In this example, 
I'll select Graphics and Photography. If you work with and edit raw images, Darktable is a good one, so I'll select that. Then click on Install. When it's finished, that program will be available for use on your computer. For browsing the web, Firefox comes pre-installed with Ubuntu. Some of you love it, and some of you hate it. There are many alternatives in the Ubuntu software app, including Chromium, Opera, and Brave, to name a few. Or you could go rogue and get Vivaldi directly from their website. Here are some of the other default apps that come pre-installed with Ubuntu that you should know about. The LibreOffice Suite provides alternatives to Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and others with many of the same features. Thunderbird Mail is used to consolidate and manage all of your email accounts and contacts. Rhythmbox helps to keep your music organized. You can also create playlists and listen to podcasts. The Shotwell Photo Manager is used to import your photos and keep them organized. And Videos, which is also known as Totem, is the default video player. If you don't like the default video app, SM Player and VLC are two others I've used that I would recommend. Let's now go through the settings that you might want to change. To get to the Settings menu, left click in the upper right of the top bar in the System Indicator area and select the Settings icon. To change up the look of your desktop, in the Background tab, you can select a new wallpaper for your desktop or your lock screen. Selecting either option, You'll be presented with various preset choices. You can select images from your pictures folder if you have any, or you could select a specific color listed. To change the background, pick an image and click on Select. In the Dock tab, just below Background, there's a toggle to auto-hide the dock when a window comes in contact with it. If you have a lot of programs in the dock, it might be useful to reduce the icon size and position on the screen lets you change the location of the dock. For a more traditional layout, some of you might prefer the dock to be located at the bottom of the screen. Let's jump down to Privacy. If you're not concerned about others viewing or using your computer when you're not around, go into Screen Lock and switch it to Off. Near the bottom of the left pane is Devices. Here you can make adjustments to your displays, keyboard, mouse, and other stuff. In display, there's a nightlight that you can turn on that can help to reduce eye strain. Selecting keyboard will show you the shortcuts that can be used with Ubuntu, many of which are used with the super key in combination with other keys. Odds are likely that you don't have a key that says super on it. On a Windows keyboard, the super key is the one with the Windows logo on it, also known as the Windows key. On a Mac keyboard, use the command key, and on a Chromebook, it will be the key with the magnifying glass logo. As you get more familiar with Ubuntu, learning the keyboard shortcuts will help you to save time and effort. Thanks for watching. All links are in the description. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share it with others. More advanced Linux videos will be coming. Let me know in the comments what topics you'd like to see covered. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on the latest tutorials and other tech-related stuff from Tech Gumbo.